The first hundred days of a new presidency are a time for America to reset our national agenda. This is Brian Lehrer. Join me, my guests, and listeners from around the country for live national call-in shows Thursday evenings for the first hundred days. How will we all get vaccinated, create jobs, fight racism, and restore our democracy? America, are we ready for the first hundred days? Thursday night at 8 on WNYC. Coming up later on Morning Edition here on WNYC, the recent online frenzy over shares of the company GameStop has one financial columnist worried about unsophisticated investors. Sure, you're going to read the news stories about someone who invested in gain stock and paid off their student loan debt. But for every one of that person, there are so many more who are going to lose money. We'll have more on that story coming up next hour. Alternate side parking is suspended through Friday. Parking meters are still in effect. 29 degrees right now. We're expecting a high of 36 today with snow likely this morning mixing with uh, rain and freezing rain in the afternoon. We're looking at uh, probably around an inch of snow in New York City. Could be two to four inches of snow north and west of the city. Tonight, a low of 25 degrees with partly cloudy skies. Tomorrow, it's going to be mostly sunny with a high In the mid-30s and uh, looking ahead to Thursday, mostly cloudy with, yes, another chance for some snow. Some clues about new stimulus checks that just might show up in March. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Progressive Insurance, offering coverage options as unique as your business. Progressive covers companies of many sizes and specialties. Learn more at ProgressiveCommercial.com. And by Key, a bank dedicated to providing guidance in unpredictable markets. Further information about economic conditions impacting your business, available at Key.com slash economic conditions. I'm David Brancaccio. Democrats in the House have released details of some of their priorities for new COVID relief, including expanding unemployment aid and the House's preferred rules for new stimulus checks. The Senate will eventually have a say in this. Marketplace's Nova Safo has more. The proposals emerging from the House Ways and Means Committee make up almost half of the $2 trillion package that President Biden wants to pass. There have been some lingering questions about potentially tweaking some of the details, such as lowering the income threshold for who qualifies for the additional $1,400 in stimulus payments that will be coming. Now we have some answers. That threshold remains the same at $75,000 per person, $150,000 per couple. Also, supplemental federal unemployment aid will be boosted from $300 to $400 a week and extended until the end of August. Plus, there are a host of provisions aimed at helping families with children. The House Ways and Means Committee will begin holding hearings on these measures starting Wednesday. Democrats want to pass the entire package into law by mid-March. I'm Nova Safo for Marketplace. Small business confidence has hit an eight-month low. The reading for January has just been released by the National Federation of Independent Business. The number expecting better business conditions through mid-year hit its lowest level since 2013. But all is not gloom in this survey. Marketplace's Justin Ho has more. It's hard to be optimistic about business over the next few months, says Randy George. He owns the Red Hen Baking Company in Vermont. Its cafe hasn't had indoor dining since last April. We do have a lot of people coming to the window and getting sandwiches to go, but it's a window. Small business pessimism can be a drag on the overall economy, says Bill Dunkelberg, chief economist at the NFIB. He says when businesses expect sales to fall. That's going to feed back into their capital spending plans and their inventory investment plans and their hiring plans. But there are reasons for optimism, too. Randy George says he expects sales to pick up in the second half of the year with more vaccinations, fewer restrictions. There's this pent up demand. And when that starts to get released, you know, our challenge might be keeping up with that. 
A survey this week from the New York Federal Reserve found that consumers anticipate their spending will grow in the year ahead at the highest rate in five years. I'm Justin Ho for Marketplace. Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, and Russell 2000 futures are all down two-tenths percent. The Russell has smaller companies. Bitcoin, cropped up by a Tesla investment, is up another 18 percent this morning at $46,341. The social medium of the moment, the blog site Reddit, has reportedly been raking in new investment. Both the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times report Reddit has brought in another quarter billion dollars, raising the company's value to six billion dollars. Its emerging advertising business shows promise. It also got global attention recently for hosting blogs where individual investors challenged Wall Street tycoons. GameStop, to use the shorthand. The Times says Reddit plans to use some of its new money to double its staff. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by UKG. Two HR technology companies have joined forces to become UKG Ultimate Kronos Group, offering HR solutions to connect the modern workforce. Learn more at UKG.com. Our purpose is people. And by Fidelity Wealth Management, providing perspective on a client's entire financial picture. Investment minimums apply. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC. And by Staples, with supplies to get business done, from ink and toner cartridges to technology like webcams and networking accessories. More at Staples stores or staples.com. This coming Friday, the IRS begins to accept 2020 tax returns. The tax season is starting late because of, well, the reason begins with a C. The IRS is still working on last year's returns, and it still has mail to open. All of this is a hurdle for taxpayers and the accountants who help them, Marketplace's Mariel Seguera reports. Imagine this. You owe money on your taxes. You pay it. And then months later, the IRS sends you a letter like that never happened. It says basically pay up, or in IRS lingo. If we do not hear from you and you do not petition the U.S. tax court, we will assess the additional tax you owe plus any applicable penalties and interests and send you a bill. That's Matt Metris, a tax preparer in New York, reading from a notice the IRS has been sending out a lot lately. Some of his clients have gotten them, and it's uncomfortable. The first thing they want to do is blame the tax preparer, like we messed something up, right? And they're like, well, I paid this. I don't know what happened. The pandemic happened. Cesar Boca Chica is an accountant for a firm in Virginia called ProSport CPA. When the pandemic hit, the IRS had to shut down their offices and... When they shut down their offices, the correspondence, the letters, the checks, they didn't stop receiving them. So the agency built up a huge backlog, millions of pieces of unopened mail and millions of unprocessed returns. And that's created all kinds of problems. Checks from taxpayers sit uncashed. Refunds never arrive. The delays are so bad, they're even affecting people who bypassed the mail and paid their taxes online. Carla Blanchard is a CPA in Illinois. She paid her taxes electronically in July. And yet, the IRS sent her letters saying she didn't. Meanwhile... You can log into your IRS account. And when I logged into mine, it showed my payment there. So the payment that they're saying I didn't make is actually posted to my account. The IRS phone lines are backed up too, so it can take a while to get through to the agency, if you can get through at all. Bob Blickwar is a CPA at UHY Advisors. He says this is confusing and upsetting for clients, especially because it costs them money. You know, we as CPAs bill for our time, and I think that's what they're finding most frustrating, that they are incurring additional charges to have these issues resolved. And to be frankly honest with you, uh, I can't say as I blame them. The IRS declined to comment for this story. But on its website, the agency acknowledges the delays. It says taxpayers should not cancel checks they've sent and that checks will be recorded on the date they were received, not opened. The IRS also says it's working hard to get through the backlog and encourages people to file their 2020 taxes online. I'm Mariel Segarra for Marketplace. Our producers are Meredith Gerritsen, Stephen Ryan, Daniel Shin, and Erica Soderstrom. I'm David Brancaccio. This is the Marketplace Morning Report. From APM, American Public Media.